They aren't Jedi or Sith, but they are dangerous, and they are after Spin Ren and Ahsoka Tano. We initially see a master and apprentice. It is swiftly established that Balon Skull, the older of the two, is a dark or fallen Jedi. He appears to have escaped the Jedi Purge, unlike many other Jedi, following Revenge of the Sith, and did not become an Inquisitor like his associate, Marok. He currently works as a mercenary with Morgan Elsbeth. Shin Hati is his apprentice, as indicated by her Padman braid and a few visual similarities to Darth Maul. She seemed to be wary of Morgan Elsbeth, but she respects her master's opinion. The two do appear to be closer than the normal Sith master and apprentice, and their mutual trust is more akin to the relationship between a Jedi and a Padawan. Hattie flew aboard an Eta class shuttle with their master Balon Skull for transportation. The names of the two dark Jedi were greatly inspired by Norse mythology. In Norse mythology, the wolves who pursue the moon and sun are named Hattie and Skull. Ragnarok, the Norse apocalypse, will commence if the two wolves manage to capture the celestial bodies. The two dark Jedi search for Grand Admiral Thrawn, whose reappearance would be disastrous for the New Republic doesn't occur well. Marok. The only information we have about this individual is that his double-bladed lightsaber and armor imply he was formerly a Sith Inquisitorus member of Darth Vader. Morgan Elsbeth employed Marok as a mercenary. Marok's face is hidden from view, which may pretend a major identity reveal in the near future. No evidence exists to suggest that Darth Vader or Palpatine had any additional apprentices during the time of the original trilogy, and unlike most dark side practitioners, these figures are using orange braided lightsabers rather than the more typical red ones. Does this imply that they are a new faction in the ongoing struggle between light and dark? The Landskull refers to a fresh start. He seemed to view the new post-imperial era as one of opportunity. He might want to succeed Palpatine as the main force in the galaxy. The two figures seem to be looking for Thrawn for their own reasons. Thrawn hunts after Joros Kabeoth, a rebellious Jedi Master in Heir to the Empire, which could be an inspiration for what is to come. He requires a strong Jedi with the ability to duplicate the phenomena known as Battle Meditation, which the Emperor previously employed to shape his soldiers into an even greater danger. The two users of the dark side employ a blood orange lightsaber rather than a fully red one, in order to transform their kyber crystals into a corrupt red colour which has a great affinity for the dark side of the force. Dark siders must bleed them. The dark Jedi may not have fully embraced the dark side of the force, but the somewhat orange lightsabers suggest that they are closer to it than the light side. Additionally, Balon didn't want to murder Ahsoka. We observed that Morgan Elsbeth recognised Balon's skull's scepticism about Ahsoka Tano. That's when Balon said that there weren't many Jedi left in the galaxy, and that's why he didn't want to murder Ahsoka. Due to this shared hatred of the Jedi and everything the Jedi Order stands for, the Sith and other adepts of the Dark Side would not think twice about killing Jedi. However, in Balan's instance, he didn't want the Jedi to become extinct, as there were only a few Jedi who survived the Imperial Era. Balan Skull may be the kind of person who believes that aims justifies the means. He may not be completely wicked, but he is trying to use evil means to achieve a purpose that is at least somewhat decent. He discussed the necessity of destroying something in order to build something new. He assured Shin that Thrawn's entry back into the galaxy would give them both access to the requisite powers. The straightforward theory posits that Balan and Shin are Sith Lords. It's entirely plausible that Balan and Shin are merely Sith Loyalists drawn to the dark side by their forced sensitivity. The rule of two is a Sith doctrine that dictates that there must be an apprentice for every master, and vice versa. They do appear to be following this. Although Balon seems to be the teacher and Shin seems to be the pupil, there are few more details that suggest they might be someone or something else entirely. In contrast to the conventional Sith threat, their lightsabers in particular appear to be somewhat unusual, having more of an orange colour. Even though it's a minor distinction, there are other dark side force users that aren't Sith. They might be reformed inquisitors, although it's unknown whether the former inquisitor in Marok is a familiar antagonist or completely new assassin, the inquisitorus was thought to have been abolished after the fall of the empire. It's conceivable since the person is still wielding the traditional inquisitor lightsaber, despite the fact that it's completely different from the other two dark side users weapons. They might be original Knights of Ren members. Although the precise date of the Knights of Ren's founding is still unknown, 
its official debut occurred during the New Republic era. The outfits and equipment worn by Balon and Shin somewhat resemble those worn by the Knights of Ren in the sequel trilogy, particularly the colours of their lightsabers resemble Kylo Ren's distinctive, not true red coloured crossguard blade more than the conventional dark side armaments do. Since Balon and Shin are the first two Dark Force users to appear in the timeline after Return of the Jedi, if this idea is correct, we may soon learn the true history of the divisive faction of the Knights of Ren, or they could be a new faction of Dark Jedi or just Dark Jedi. Dark Jedi, often referred to as Fallen Jedi, were force sensitive people, often former Jedi, who made the decision to reject the light side of the force or adhere to it. Although the term Dark Jedi was initially used to describe a Jedi who had turned to the dark side, it may also be used to describe naive force sensitives who had no Jedi training but started off working for another Dark Jedi. Others were only Dark Side users who did not adhere to the Sith's or other organizations' precepts. Palpatine would revive the phrase in Legends, giving the title to operatives working for him. The seven Dark Jedi, those under the thrall of Maluka Jarak, may have served as an inspiration for the three Dark Side practitioners who not all brandished traditionally red lightsabers. The only red lightsaber users are members Jarek and Ma, Saris brandished a blue saber, Gorik and Pick orange sabers, Bok purple sabers and Yun yellow saber. Like and subscribe. Until the next time on Star Wars Invader.